Hi ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to be talking about the first topic under the category of government intervention. This is section 1.3 in the Econ syllabus, so you can have a look at that. Essentially, this is looking at how can the government intervene in specific markets? What are specific things that they can do if they wish to accomplish any goals? Okay, the first one we're going to start off with may be the easiest government intervention of all to understand because we're probably all quite familiar with it, is taxes. Okay, taxes uh, come in many different forms. Today, we're going to be talking about what we call indirect taxes or taxes on expenditure. Now, you might be aware that people, of course, have income tax as well. When people gain income, the government will take uh, a chunk of that as well. But specifically today, we want to talk about taxes on goods, taxes on expenditure, right? When you go to the store and buy something, um, you need to pay a tax on that as well. Now, often you don't notice that tax because it's already included in the price, but we have this indirect tax. All right. Now, the first question is, why does the government impose indirect taxes? Why does it have taxes on expenditure? Can you think of any reasons why the government might want to tax a specific good or another? Well, obviously, the government can make money off of this, right? The government can make tax revenue and they'll be able to use this to, to do all kinds of things that the government provides in an economy, right? But um, but on top of that, the government can actually use indirect taxes to reduce the consumption or reduce the production of certain goods. Suppose there's a type of good that the government doesn't like us buying. Let's take a good like cigarettes, normal, you know, typical example. The government doesn't like us smoking cigarettes. Why? Because there's all these negative effects that we provide to society as a result of them. More people get sick, there's secondhand smoking, littering, all the rest of it, right? So the government doesn't like people buying cigarettes. But instead of banning cigarettes completely, what do they decide to do? Well, they decide to increase taxes on them. By increasing taxes, they hope that fewer people will actually buy these cigarettes. Right. If you book fewer people buy these cigarettes, then hey, not only does the government make some tax revenue, but they're also accomplishing this goal of reducing overall consumption. OK, so that might be the main reason in which the government really imposes these indirect taxes. Number one, to gain more tax revenue, but second, to maybe curb the consumption of what we call a demerit good, a bad good for society. We'll talk more about that in the future. Now, how can the government impose these taxes? Um, well, it can impose them through what we call a specific tax. A specific tax is essentially the government says, you add this specific value to the price of any good. So, well, suppose that a pack of cigarettes costs $5, the government says, well, this is going to have an additional tax of two dollars okay so some specific value two dollars three dollars whatever it is um, that's added to the price of the good that's what we would call a specific tax how would we uh, graph this well let's let's have a look suppose we have a simple diagram that looks something like this i want to show a simple kind of supply and demand diagram where we have price on our y-axis and we have quantity on our x-axis oh, sorry about that let's go back to draw and we've got here a quantity on our x-axis. Okay, um, what I want to draw is a normal supply curve and I want to draw a normal demand curve. Here we've got our supply, here we've got our demand. Now let's suppose this is a market for cigarettes and the government wants to put a tax on these cigarettes. Well, when they place a tax, is this going to affect the supply? Is this going to affect the demand? Well, it's kind of difficult to know from, from the, from the get-go. It probably will affect the quantity demand that we've got, but it probably won't reduce our overall demand, right? Our overall wanting to buy cigarettes. What it will affect is the supply of cigarettes. Specifically, it'll become more expensive for suppliers to supply cigarettes. Basically, at every price, uh, or at every price point, I should say, this tax is added, okay? So essentially, um, this entire supply curve is going to shift upwards because the entire supply of cigarettes will become more expensive because now we've got this tax added to every single pack of cigarettes that we sell. So I'm going to call this S plus our tax, or I'll say S plus our T. 
Okay, so that's going to be our new supply curve. So as a result of adding a specific tax, all that's going to happen is our supply curve is going to shift inwards, or you can think of it as shifting upwards because it's becoming more expensive to this new supply curve. Okay, so quite easy to see there how a, a tax, a specific tax, will cause a supply curve to shift. Okay, you can see I've added the other type of tax that we can add on, have on here as well, the other type of indirect tax, which we call an ad valorem tax. Now, an ad valorem tax, as you can see from the definition, is a tax where a percentage of the sale price is added to the price of the good. Instead of saying, hey, we're going to add $2 in taxes to every cigarette box that's sold, it's saying, let's add a tax of 10%. Let's add a tax of 20% to the good that's being sold. Now, you can see in, in the implementation, this is a tiny bit different. Okay, So a tax of 10% might look different than a tax of, of $1, let's say, depending on the price of the good. Okay, So I want to see how can we actually graph this phenomenon as well. Okay, So suppose we set up a set of axes like this again. Now I want to graph an ad valorem tax. We've got price and we've got quantity. Now I'm going to, just like I did last time, set up my demand and I'm going to set up my supply. We've got demand here and we've got our supply curve going upwards. Now, if we've got an ad valorem tax, this is adding a percentage of the price as a tax. So suppose the price is extremely low. That would be us being down here, right? If the price of the good is extremely low, then the percentage uh, or the, the actual value that's added when we take this percentage of the good is quite low as well. How do, how do I mean by that? Well, suppose the cigarettes got, only cost $1 and we had a 10% tax. Well, in that case, the value of the tax is quite low. It's only 10 cents, right? Because out of $1, um, an extra 10% would be that, that extra 10 cents, right? So, you know, if we're looking at low prices, you know, the ad valorem tax actually isn't quite much. It, it's probably just a tiny bit higher than the actual price of uh, without the tax. However, when we're looking at some high prices, suppose the cigarettes cost $100 a pack. When we're now looking at a 10% tax, well, suddenly out of $100, 10% is quite a lot, a $10 difference, right? So in this top region, when the price is quite high, the difference between you know, the normal supply curve and the supply curve with this tax is quite high, okay? So if we were to draw our new, new supply curve as a result of this ad valorem tax, we're going to start quite close to them, but we'll actually increase and get further and further away from each other. And that's what an ad valorem tax is going to look like, okay? So here we've got S plus our tax. <clears throat> but that's the, in the ad valorem case. So you can see the difference between specific and ad valorem is in specific, we end up with the same distance between the two supply curves uh, the entire time. They run parallel to each other. In the ad valorem case, they actually get further and further away from each other because of the nature of how we're actually taxing these. Okay. Now, these are two good diagrams to know. Ad valorem, you very rarely see in more detail than this. Okay, So you might need to be able to define what an ad valorem tax is, draw this diagram. But as we get into the more complicated discussions about tax, uh, we're generally going to stick with a specific tax. Why? It's just easier to graph, it's easier to work with, it's easier to see exactly how it works. So these are the two graphs, but if there's one to really memorize how to draw, it's that first one, the specific tax diagram. Okay, we're going to clear this for now, uh, and we're going to talk about um, how might we actually apply this now that we know how to show you know, a simple shift of the supply curve to encompass this tax. What more uh, level of detail do we know, need to go into? Well, as um, an SL student, as a uh, standard level student, you'll need to be able to show the effect of this indirect tax and explain how it's going to affect consumers, producers, and the government. Okay. As an HSL student, you need to go a tiny bit further than that. You need to be able to, on top of just drawing the standard indirect tax diagram, we need to be able to in, uh, include elasticities into it. Okay. We need to be able to draw what will the effect of a tax be when the uh, demand is extremely elastic, and what will the effect of a tax be when the demand is extremely inelastic. Now, we're going to be talking about that concept in the next video. Today, we're going to be focusing on that kind of SL base. Okay, This is, of course, relevant to HL as well, but HLs need to go a tiny bit further. We'll look at that in the next video. For now, I want to focus on this first bit, which is essentially just saying, 
we want to look at how will the tax affect producers, how will a tax affect consumers, and how will a ta tax affect the government. Well, I'm going to go to kind of a, a blank page so that we can we can actually draw this out. Okay. Um, now I'm going to um, start setting up a diagram similar to what we saw previously. We're going to basically have a, a similar specific tax diagram. And we'll put on price and we'll put on quantity. Now we've got a general supply curve and we've got a demand curve. And I want to show this specific tax that's been added. So the government has imposed some kind of specific tax. Remember that this should run parallel to your old supply curve. So this is our S plus our tax. And we can see that our supply curve has now shifted inwards. Well, let's start noting some, some different things. Well, I'm going to move into a different color here just so we can see um, exactly what we're highlighting. Okay. Um, well, first of all, this was our equilibrium before our tax, right? Everyone can see that. This was where our initial supply curve met our initial demand curve. So this is where we initially had some equilibrium, right? We had some quantity. We'll call this quantity one, and we had some price, and we can call that our price one as well. Well, as a result of this supply uh, shift, as a result of the tax, our supply curve has moved inwards, and we've established a new equilibrium. This new equilibrium will have a new price and a new quantity. Okay. Well, what can we know? Well, first of all, the quantity is lower. Quantity of cigarettes that's going to be sold in this market is lower than it was previously. On top of that, the price is higher. Now, these things are both to be expected, right? Why are these things both to be expected? Well, as a result of this change, as a result of the um, tax being added to cigarettes, people are going to be buying fewer cigarettes, understandably, because they're more expensive, and the price will be higher. Those are the only two things that we've shown right now, right? Now, I want to show how is this going to affect consumers, how is it going to affect producers, and how will it affect the government? Well, let's start with the government. That's quite an easy one to think about. Because as a result of this tax being imposed, obviously the government will make some kind of revenue. We're going to make government revenue. Now, how large is that revenue going to be, is my question. Well, let's think about it. There, there are now Q2 amounts of cigarettes sold on the market. Okay, this is our new quantity. So in this country or in this town or wherever we're looking, there are now Q2 amounts of cigarettes sold. And for each cigarette that's sold, the government makes some tax revenue. How large is that tax revenue? Well, you can actually think of the size of the tax as being the vertical distance between our two supply curves. This is how big the tax is. Maybe that's $1, maybe that's $2, but that's the size of the tax the per unit size of the tax, would you say, okay? So where can we actually show some kind of region, some kind of curve um, that, that signifies what the size of the government tax revenue is? Well, remember that Q2 is the amount of um, cigarettes that are sold. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go up along this line here, and when I get to our original supply curve, I'm gonna stop. Why? Because I know that the size and this vertical distance is going to be the size of the tax, right? That's what we established in the top right there. And because the government, or because there are Q2 amounts of cigarettes being sold, we can take this distance here. That's how many cigarettes that are being sold. What we've got here is this little rectangle that we've created. Now this rectangle has the base of the amount of cigarettes sold, and it has the height of the per unit tax. Essentially, this rectangle is showing us the amount of tax revenue that the government is going to make. Okay, so if I, I kind of fill in this, this rectangle, you'll see this is actually going to be the size of the government tax revenue in this entire region here. That's our government tax revenue. Okay, so that's how we show the effect um, for the government. Okay, now I'm going to erase this for one second and we're going to have a look at a diagram which will explain this even more clearly. Okay, and we'll see, we'll see how we can show these last two effects. 
So here we've got a diagram which shows exactly what I kind of just drew. We've got the example of flowers instead, we've got a, a supply curve, and we've got the supply curve shifted inwards as a result of the tax. Now, this entire rectangle is the one that we just drew. That was the government tax revenue. You see, in this diagram, they've also broken down the lost consumer surplus and lost producer surplus. Now, what are these concepts? Well, essentially, as a result of this tax, consumers are going to be hurt and producers are going to be hurt, right? Consumers, why are they going to be hurt? Well, they need to pay more for their cigarettes. Why are producers going to be hurt? Well, fewer people are going to buy cigarettes now, so producers have a lower chance of making profits, okay? So these rectangles, this top one, um, that you, you're going to end up drawing, um, ends up sh representing exactly how much are consumers affected, okay? Exactly how much surplus do they lose, consumer surplus do they lose? And this bottom one is going to be a lost producer surplus, just how much surplus do the producers lose, okay? In a future video, we'll talk about exactly why these um, boxes are the ones that are shown. Okay. But this is the base of, of understanding taxes in the IB syllabus. We need to understand the difference between specific and ad valorem taxes, be able to draw the two different ones, and then do this basic diagram of showing um, the effect on the government, the effect on producers, and the effect on consumers when we add a specific tax to a given market. Okay. As I mentioned, in the next video, we'll talk about the HL-specific topics when we talk about taxes. We're going to be talking about manipulating the demand curve to show different elasticities and seeing what kind of effect that has on the tax diagram that we draw. But for now, um, that's the end of this video. Hope you check out the next one.